coming up tonight on Middle Tennessee News. A local Murfreesboro teen's art is showcased in an art museum in Nashville, and new freshmen at MTSU get excited because there are some new scholarships on the way. And the MTSU tennis team is looking forward to their new facilities. All those stories plus your local weather and sports, Middle Tennessee News starts right now. Good evening, I'm Kara Fullington. And I'm Sarah Oppmann. Welcome to Middle Tennessee News. The Lebanon Police Department arrested a registered sex offender on Monday night. The officers responded to a, a possible sexual battery at Walmart involving a juvenile female. Police reviewed surveillance footage of the incident and identified three other victims of the same crime. The perpetrator was identified as a local sex offender, Christopher Monroe, Marin was arrested and given several charges, including two counts of aggravated sexual battery, resisting arrest, and simple possession. Two of the victims were juveniles, while the last victim has not yet been identified. Murfreesboro police need help identifying a person of interest in a fraud case. On September 5th, a man purchased two new iPhones using a stolen ID from a Verizon store on Thompson Lane. He also opened a new line of credit and purchased about $2,600 worth of jewelry from online from Jared's Jewelers. The fraudulent purchases total to about $10,000. Murfreesboro police are asking to call Detective Ray Daniel with the Murfreesboro Police Department if you know who this person may be or have any information on this investigation. Tennessee will be more connected than ever thanks to new grant funds that will go toward the state's internet infrastructure. Nearly $447 million has been awarded by the state to provide broadband internet access to homes and businesses that are without it, especially in rural areas. Governor Bill Lee and Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development Commissioner Stuart McWhorter made the announcement to prepare the state for continued growth and achieve economic success. Many local and state officials agree that the, these investments will improve the daily lives of citizens as internet access is becoming more of a necessity. The Murfreesboro Police Department is on a hunt for an armed suspect who committed theft. The suspect went into a Lowe's on September 17th and stole a backpack blower and additional items. The suspect then pointed his firearm at an employee after being approached. He was seen leaving the scene in a white work truck pulling a trailer. The Murfreesboro Police Department is asking for public assistance in, uh, in identifying the perpetrator. If you have any information or no know the location of the suspect, contact Detective Gorham at 629-201-5507 with any information. A local high school student's art is selected to be shown at the Frisk Art Museum in Nashville. Fernando Morelos Gomez is a student at Oakland High School here in Murfreesboro. Gomez was one of 36 students selected for the Young Tennessee Art Show. Within this art expedition, students create two-dimensional artwork. A jury of Tennessee artists, educators, and museum professionals select the artwork for the show. Gomez's art is graphite, ink, and colored pencil drawing on paper. The name of his work is Like Yesterday. The exhibition will be available for viewing until February 12th in 2023. Be sure to mark your calendars for the annual Walk to End Alzheimer's on October 22nd. The Alzheimer's Association was founded in 1980 and has been providing care and support to those affected ever since. And the fight is still in full swing. The Walk to End Alzheimer's takes place in over 600 places annually, but the one in Rutherford County is taking place on October 22nd, with the walk starting at 9.30 a.m. Registration is free, however, donations are more than welcome to keep the association in full operation. The Alzheimer's Association uses donations to provide 24-7 care and support for those affected by the disease. Visit www.act.alz.org for more information. The annual blood drive battle against WKU is coming soon. MTSU is in need of donors and volunteers for the battle against their number one rival. The blood drive competition against Western Kentucky University will take place the week of October 3rd through the 5th. Donors even have the chance to win prizes ranging from $20 Amazon gift cards 
to four tickets to the MTSU versus FAU game. You can sign up to be a donor by going to www.redcrossblood.org and use the sponsor code MTSU. If you're interested in being a volunteer, an email has been sent out with a link to a Google Doc with a form to sign up. To donate blood, you must be 17 years or older, over 110 pounds, and in good health. The winner of the blood drive will be announced on October 15th during the football game between MTSU and WKU. Some great news for upcoming freshmen has been announced. The eligibility terms for the guaranteed academic scholarships at MTSU have been broadened. The TrueVu scholarship will be available to first-time freshmen with an ACT score of 22 to 24 and at least a 3.5 GPA in high school. The payout is $3,500. The next addition to the list was the Centennial Scholar, which provides $32,000 over the course of four years and is for students with a 35 to 36 on the ACT. The trustee scholarship will continue to be awarded to students with an ACT score of 30 to 33 and a GPA of 3.5 during their high school career. The award for the trustee will be $20,000 in total, given out over the course of four years. And now Carly Sutton joins us with our first look at the weather. I hope everyone is having a great week so far, despite those summer-like temperatures. The highs were high this week, but they are expected to progressively get cooler as we head into the weekend. Here in the mid-state, our averages were looking in the low to mid-90s, with Mount Juliet hitting our highest temperature of 96 degrees today. Allergens were pretty harsh today, with high levels of ragweed pollen across the mid-state, but those levels are expected to drop as temperatures cool off throughout the week. Humidity was a bit lower today in our covered cities, but those percentages are expected to rise as we head into tonight. Stick around after the break and I'll have tonight's forecast for the Mid-State. Kira, back to you. Thanks, Carly. And still ahead on Middle Tennessee News, an MTN Sports reporter, reporter traveled back in time to look at a moment in history for MTSU football. And the annual Jazz Series is coming back to MTSU's campus. That's coming up next on Middle Tennessee News. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. 
Back to Middle Tennessee News, and now we have Dr. Larry Burris with this week's media commentary. I don't know how many times I've heard that no one cares about print anymore. Print is dead. Print is so, is so, well, 20th century. Actually, with the development of the internet, long after the development of print, print, in the form of typography, has become even more important. Because of the internet, we're all communicating more often than ever before. But it's not just email, Facebook, and Twitter. Every time you go to a website, there are dozens of messages trying to get your attention. So every message sender is having to make sure their message is as effective as possible. We know, for example, that lowercase letters are generally easier to read and understand. But with apologies to E.E. E. Cummings, all lowercase can be disconcerting because we use both punctuation and capitalization to make passages easier to read. Boldface has a sense of urgency. Italic type is used to set off long quotations and also has an air of sophistication. And underlining? Well, a block of text that is underlined just looks strange. Look at how little underlining you see in advertisements. All caps is seen as shouting, but sometimes we need to be yelled at. That road sign warning us of a railroad crossing isn't asking for a discussion or a dialogue. It's shouting at you in all caps because it's giving you a serious warning. Color makes the problems even worse. You know, we can always tell new graphic design students because almost all of them want to use flashing red letters on a black background, which, if you've ever seen it, is almost impossible to read. So here's what's really interesting. Printing represents the oldest nonverbal medium of communication, but it seems to be the only one that has withstood the ravages of the Internet. I'm Larry Burris. Thank you, Dr. Burris, and make sure to join us next week for his next media commentary. MTSU School of Music is looking forward to showcasing the talents of new professors at the annual Jazz Artist Series. Pat Coyle and Julia Rich will take the stage with other School of Music colleagues at the 23rd edition of the Jazz Artist Series on September 29th. The performance will take place at 7.30 p.m. in Hinton Hall located inside the Wright Building. For tickets and more information, visit the mtsu.edu slash music and click on the Concerts tab. Middle Tennessee State University has ceremoniously broken ground for its new tennis facility. The new facility, which will be located between Middle Tennessee Boulevard and we'll Green and Drive, underway. will house both men's and women's tennis and include updated courts and spectator provisions along with new offices, locker rooms, and other amenities. The $7 million project will provide opportunities not just for the MTSU teams, but local tennis programs as well. The constructional development follows the third straight Conference USA tennis title for the men's team. We got to check in with Coach Jimmy Borndame about how he feels about the new facility. One of the things that's been hurting us in the men's program is we have none of the student athletes that we have brought to the team have ever been on an official visit. Part of that was because I was ashamed uh, of this facility and didn't want to show that to them. And now I'm going to be able to be proud to show our facilities and, and bring stu uh, prospective student athletes on campus because we and now Carly joins us with tonight's forecast. Mid-September has been quite the roller coaster when it comes to weather. We've had highs, we've had lows, but hopefully we'll start to see those fall temperatures soon. I know I'm ready for them. We are barely escaping the heat this week as we head back into tonight's forecast. Temperatures are staying pretty consistent in the high 60s, so not too cold after the sun goes down. But those humidity levels are rising high tonight, so expect those temperatures to feel even warmer. Stick around because after the break, I'll have your full five-day forecast for Murfreesboro. Kira? I know I was very hot on the way to class, but still ahead on Middle Tennessee News, Carly will join us with a full weather report, and Dylan Simmons will join us in the MTN Sports Den. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. 
They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. And Carly now joins us with our full weather report. Welcome back, everyone, for your full five-day Murfreesboro forecast. Today was one of the hottest days on record for Murfreesboro at 94 degrees, whew, with the humidity bumping it up to over 100. The last time we had a high like this was in September of 1954. The low for today isn't getting much cooler with all that humidity, so we're expected to see 71 degrees after sunset. Temperatures are expected to progressively cool off throughout the week, but possibly will heat back up throughout the weekend. Thursday is looking at a high of 78 and a low of 51, with that humidity level jumping back up to 63%. Friday will have a high of 75 with a low of 54, making it our coolest day of the week. Saturday is heating back up a little with a high of 83 and a low of 63. But with partly cloudy skies and scattered storms expected throughout the night, we can expect temperatures to feel a little cooler. Sunday will be the most humid day of the week with a high of 80 and a low of 54. Scattered showers are expected all throughout the day and are projected to last well into early Monday morning. And despite Sunday's weather being a little damp, I still encourage you to all to head out this weekend and get involved in our community. Our neighbors in Smyrna are hosting their 15th annual Depot Days along Front Street in historic Smyrna this weekend. There will be over a hundred food, craft, and business vendors starting at 10 a.m. Friday the 24th. I hope to see you there. When we come back, Dylan is over in the MTN Sports Den. He'll have an interesting sports report that'll take you back in time. And the rest of your sports report after the break. Son, 
Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just a little one. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day, he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Thanks, Kira. It is going to be a tremendous weekend for MT Athletics and Blue Raider football will be in the spotlight as much as any team. Mr. MTN Sports Director himself, Noah Brady, is about to take you in the Wayback Machine to the 1930s to see what happened the last time MTSU and the Miami Hurricanes faced off. Without any further ado, Noah, the floor is yours. It's been 90, yes, 90 years exactly since MTSU was faced off against the Hurricanes of Miami University. To put that into Blue Raider terms, that predates Johnny Red Floyd Stadium, our favorite mascot, Lightning, the NCAA, and even the Blue Raider name itself. Back then, instead of the Blue Raiders, it was the Middle Tennessee State Teacher Football Program lighting up score sheets in the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Association. But if there's one thing that stayed the same across the last century of football action, Miami has always been a matchup that MTSU has had circled on their calendars. On their last road trip of the 1932 football campaign, Coach Frank Falkenberry and the 28 members of the Middle Tennessee football program head to South Florida for some warmer weather and a spirited bout. That's right, at approximately 3 o'clock tomorrow, the teachers of Middle Tennessee will take on Coach Tommy McCann's Fighting Hurricanes of the University of Miami. Now remember folks, it was this time last year, late November, when the Hurricanes made their way here to Murfreesboro in what is now known by all of Miami football fans as the suicide trip of 1931. The Middle Tennessee 25 to zero beatdown is something that the Hurricanes certainly have remembered and something that they'll certainly be looking to avenge. It's sure to be a battle for the ages as Luther Smith, Middle Tennessee's captain, and his rowdy bunch look to bounce back after a tough loss to Tennessee Tech and end this football season on a high note. A lot, and I mean a lot has happened in the last century of football, but if you don't take anything else away from this history lesson, hear this. Any team can beat any team on any given week, and if Miami disregards that going into battle with the Big Blue Nation of Middle Tennessee State, history might just repeat itself. In Murfreesboro, Noah Brady, MTN Sports. Thank you, Noah, and what an awesome look back at this historic series. MTSU will bring the storm to Miami this Saturday against the Hurricanes at 2.30. Both teams will be looking to overcome offensive setbacks as well as play better defense against each other. It's going to be a big matchup, and if MTSU can win, it will be their first top 25 win in quite some time. You can learn more about this climactic showdown on Blue Raider Extra Point, which airs on True Blue TV and the MTN Sports YouTube channel, Saturdays at 10.30. MTSU women's soccer has fired their first shot in CUSA this year. The Lady Raiders traveled to Birmingham to play the UAB Lady Blazers over the weekend. UAB would strike as precisely as a surgeon by scoring the first goal of the game, courtesy of Carlin Presley. MT would not be shaken, however, as Emma Peterson responded by tying the game at one with the first goal of her collegiate career. Hearts would unfortunately be broken like Titans fans Monday night as UAB struck with a goal with just five minutes of play remaining. 
The Raiders would drop their CUSA opener and now sit at 2-5-1 on the year. Coach Aston Roding would state that this was a tough road loss for us. Now we shift our attention to North Texas at home. They now look to recalibrate against the North Texas Lady Mean Green tomorrow night at 7 in their CUSA home opener. MT Volleyball brought their brand of play to the Red Storm Invitational over the weekend. The Lady Raiders would face challenges as steep as a mountain and started with undefeated Boston College. That undefeated title would not last for long as the Lady Eagles suffered their first loss of the year 3-1 thanks to a consistent scoring barrage by MTSU. They would follow that up with another rock-solid win against Columbia, also by a score of 3-1, but would ultimately suffer the pain of defeat after losing to St. John's in the final day of the tourney. Despite the tough ending, MT has a lot to be proud of as freshman Adri Rhoda continued her Patrick Mahomes-esque emergence as she led the team with 47 kills. Her and junior Taylor Eisert would also be named to the all-tournament team, and Rhoda would receive CUSA Freshman of the Week honors for the third straight week. The focus now shifts to the next game against Alabama A&M in the Lady Raiders' home opener for the year, and will be followed up by a home matchup that will be called by our very own Ryan Martin Olich. Make sure to check it out. Kira, back to you. Thanks, Dylan. And wrapping up our show tonight, it's World Alzheimer's Day. This day is centered around creating awareness for the Alzheimer's disease. This disease is a form of dementia that disrupts mental and daily functions. This disease affects people all around the world, and there is around 200,000 people affected by Alzheimer's. To observe this day, you could participate in spreading the awareness of World Dementia Day. It could be as easy as an Instagram post or a Twitter post. For example, check out our social media sites. Also, you could reach out to the nation's Alzheimer's Association. Thank you for joining us for Middle Tennessee News. I'm Sarah Oppman, joined by Kiera Fullington, Carly Sutton, and D Dylan Simmons. If you missed this or any show, you can watch them on our website, middletennesseenews.net. Make sure to follow us on all social media sites as well as Facebook slash Middle Tennessee News or at Middle TN News on Twitter and TikTok. See us on Monday, September 26th for our next show. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little one. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the keys down, Kevin. But 
I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call her right home.